Hello everyone. For those of you unfortunate enough to sit through that last video, uh, you know that I moved my development environment again over to a Macintosh. This is my second uh, Mac laptop. And so now I have uh, both my Macs, my Maverick and my pre-Maverick uh, ones set up to uh, to to uh, to do pipulate locally, and I am now getting rid of all these tabs that don't that were created uh, fairly recently. This first one is interesting. I can't get rid of. Do you want to close this tab? We'll terminate process. Oh, SSH process. No, I don't want to terminate the whole SSH. Oh yeah, this might be the last one still logged in to. Uh, yeah, well, there it is. Right failed broken pipe. This is the problem that made, this is one of the various problems that made me go back to uh, developing uh, on local host instead of the uh, Raspberry Pi. I love the Raspberry Pi, but it can really make uh, development uh, a, a pain because it's slow. It's the restarting of the server every time you edit a, a Python Flask file is slow. The SSH connection keeps breaking. And I know there's ways to fix that to keep the connection open, but uh, I'm just going with local development again. So here you can see Pipulate running, and if I open a web browser, let's see, I already got one open there. This is going to be my web browser. Uh, I can hit it on localhost, and it's working. Now you see my authentication token from last time. Now what we're going to do is see what that what this URL does to the local cookies. I suspect I'm being cookied when this occurs by the uh, by the Google login server. So we're going to close out entirely from that. We're going to even quit Chrome. Hopefully, end any uh, session dependent cookies. I will fire Chrome back up. And I will go to localhost 8080. And now we're going to see what cookies we have. We just do an inspect element uh, to bring up the uh, this thing here. And now I think we can look through some of our things like uh, sources, timelines, profiles, resources. There's cookies right there under resources. We are uh, uncookied at this moment. I go here. I go log in, and voila, there are cookies. Uh, I'm probably showing you like terribly private stuff here, I'd imagine, but uh, you are cookied after you do a login. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, well, no, I'm cookied because I'm on the Google site. If I click here, ah, yes, we're back at the localhost site and hey interesting still no cookies hmm because my th question then is if you go over here you try another login you can see that it doesn't even pop up anything it just comes right back here so the question is how does it know to not do it again Well, these things weren't here under cookies. I'm going to just go through that process one more time to understand what I'm looking at. Localhost 8080. Developer console. Resources. Cookies. Localhost entry under cookies. Go into login. Go ahead and log in. See, even there it didn't prompt me. Maybe I hadn't completely quit out, but at any rate, here are the entries under cookies now. Uh, although when you click on them, it says they have no cookies. Cloudfront.net. Hmm. Okay. Well, at any rate, uh, 
This just means my work is all the more important because I won't be able to lift an existing cookie off of the site. I really need to do that forwarding that I was discussing. And so what we're going to do is detect if there's a hash mark whenever this uh, page is displayed in a non-post uh, method. If it's displayed in a in a get method, which basically means any time a URL is typed in here and it's not reached as a result of a form submission, and, uh, that's what it is on uh, as a result of a redirect. And so we're going to emit a little JavaScript when that is the condition. And uh, we'll open another tab here. Now there's no login. I can just cd into pipulate. Oh, ls, I'm already in the pipulate directory. It must have used my cd from before to decide uh, what to make the new tabs current directory. So I can just vim pipulate. Hooray! This is actually kind of what I want. Now I need to go to where the redirect after the login occurs. Get login link. And, uh, hmm, okay, it might not, not actually be in uh, pipulate.py where this work occurs, so we make yet another tab, and we cd into templates, and then we cd into, uh, no, not, so now we vim pipulate.html, and uh, we got stuff here, we got stuff here. And uh, I can just put a little bit of a script here. And we can end script. Now, most of our programming that we've been doing is Python. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of JavaScript. Alert. Hello, world. That means any time now that this page displays hello world will pop up according to this tiny little JavaScript program that I embedded into the template. We go over here. We really don't need the developer console anymore. I'll do a refresh. Hello world, we know we're getting the JavaScript. Now I only want that JavaScript to come up if this form has uh, if there is a hash mark up here. So, uh, JavaScript hash URL values Stack Overflow as usual. not key values that we want. Stack Overflow is not my answer. I want to display or get JavaScript hash values. How to get the hash value, and it's a fairly easy thing, location.hash. And uh, yeah, location.hash. I believe that's all you need to give. So that alert hello world, we're going to change into alert location.hash. Welcome to the wonderful, easy world of JavaScript. Go back here, do a refresh. Hey, there's our whole access token being alerted. This is now getting to be an interesting video, isn't it? Now I only want to uh, show that pop-up if there is an access token. So I'm going to make a before and after version. I didn't want to do a refresh. I wanted to do a new tab, another uh, local post 8080 entry. And it is doing that same pop-up. But now it's saying empty. And now we're going to see if... Uh, uh, JavaScript is as awesome as Python being able to just go if 
location.hash open curly bracket. So it should only alert it if it's there. If it's not there, it shouldn't alert it. And so we go back over here, we go to this one. No alert is coming up. That doesn't answer our question because it still could be a JavaScript error. I'm going to go to this one, and it is coming up. So we have some JavaScript now uh, that is, shall we say, encapsulated. No, well, we have some JavaScript that is conditionally being executed based on whether there is a hash mark or not. And now the next thing is we actually want uh, to forward to another URL and... Uh, Let's see, we want to just replace the hash mark. And this dot hash var hash equals this dot hash dot replace split on. Okay, this is doing a lot more than I need to do. Uh, what I need is the, since the hash mark is in such a predictable location, the leftmost item, all I need to do is. Uh, well, before I do any of that, I'm just I'm just going to try and go right for the redirect. Instead of doing that alert, I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to say delete word, delete word, insert document dot location is going to be. Uh, I'll just hardwire localhost in here for now. HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 question mark gotcha plus the hash mark. So all it's going to do is it's going to put a gotcha in there and forward it along to another URL that is also going to carry uh, the, the hash mark. Gotcha. So the hash mark, I'm, I'm forwarding it from one hash mark location to another hash mark location, but I'm changing the URL in the process, and if this is successful, I'll stop the video and do the work to make sure I'm forwarding it to uh, uh, the actual desirable URL. So we go over here, and just one refresh, and you should just see the word gotcha appear in there. Hmm, I don't think it did. But it's probably a JavaScript error that's occurring, the way I'm forwarding it to document.location. One of the ways we can help to debug this is just paste that again keep a good copy of it, and then just uh, try and alert what we're trying to, uh, to do here. And you can't actually alert uh, a document.location object, I don't think. So let me uh, alert the URL that we're trying to build. And uh, I need one more closing parenthesis at the end of there. Save. Refresh. Okay. That looks good. So it's just my knowledge of how to do a redirect in JavaScript. JavaScript. Redirects. I thought it was just setting a document, a value of a document location. If you're looking to do a simple JavaScript redirect, then some of these answers might be useful. Window.location. 
Okay, window.location equals. Oh, I guess this is what I was trying to do. Only it works only with IE. So window.location equals the URL we just built. So put it in that instead of in an alert. 300 people like that answer. Must be a good answer. Back overflow is good. That's looking good, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now when I do a refresh on the one that has the token, it should just essentially look like it flashes a gotcha into a URL. And that will have been the redirect. Here's the one with the hash mark. Refresh. Bam! Gotcha. See that there? And so the rest is using a left or a right or some string manipulation to just make sure it doesn't remain inside a hash mark. And we got a nice clean way to do this. That last video was a surprise video in that I kind of have to be on either localhost or a legitimately registered public domain in order to use OAuth 2 authentication. Even localhost isn't supposed to be able to work, but I think it's a loophole that Google put in there so that you can at least develop on your local machine. What they're not expecting is for you to be developing on something like this, sitting by the side of your desk, which is exactly what I've been doing. That doesn't have a publicly registered domain resolving to it, although in truth it really does in this case. I could be using MikeLevinSEO.com as the, uh, the OAuth2 redirect URI, and that is a solution coming up that I think I'll explore with you when it comes time to move your work off of your local machine and onto real hardware but consider that a preview. Uh, for now, uh, this is a huge accomplishment. I'll clean up that URL in the next video and OAuth2 login will pretty much be done as soon as I record it off into a Flask session variable. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon and don't forget to subscribe.